Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to crimp different terminals and butt splices to the ends of your wires. If you find yourself working with heavier gauge wire, you may find crimping to be an easier and quicker solution than soldering. So if you're interested, check this out. Here we have four different crimp devices, a pin terminal, a ring terminal, a insulated butt splice, and a uninsulated butt splice. Notice how on all the insulated devices, we see blue shielding. There's a reason for this, and it's to denote what size wire these devices are rated for. Blue is good for gauges 16 through 14, red is good for gauges 22 to 16, and yellow is good for gauges 12 to 10. Make sure you have the right size terminal for the wire that you're working with, and also make sure you have the right kind of wire for the terminal that you're going to be applying to it. All of these are designed for copper only wire, so you need to make sure that you're using copper wire to make sure you get a good crimp. Here I have three different crimping tools. The best tool is the one that offers the greatest amount of leverage so you can get the highest amount of crimping pressure. Before you start, take a look at your terminal. You will notice a slit in the metal. Here you can see it at the top of the ring terminal and the pin terminal. The concept behind crimping is that we will deform the terminal and crush the wire in the process. The slit here allows the left and right side of the terminal to fold down onto the wire and create the cold weld. If you have an insulated terminal like this one shown here, you will notice a ridge in the plastic. What this ridge denotes is everything on this side of the ridge is going to be metal that crimps to the copper wire, and everything on this side of the ridge is just going to be where the insulation of the wire rests for strain relief. When you place the terminal on the wire, you want the copper to come out the other side. However, you do not want the copper to interfere with the terminal, so aim to get one or two millimeters through. Make sure you don't have any splayed copper strands when you feed it into the terminal. Let's start with this stripper crimper combo. I'm going to zoom in on the crimping region here. Now you'll notice that there are different colored dots and different slots for different terminals and the color coding of the dots matches that of the terminal. So we're going to want to use the, the slot for the blue uh, terminals, which is this one here. We know that because there are slots for both insulated and non-insulated. Now you'll notice that in this slot that we want to use, there is both a ridge and a valley. We want to line up the slit on the terminal with the valley. So pretty much like that, we have an insulated device, we have the ridge of the tool on the back side of the ter terminal, and we have the valley on the same side with the slit. So that's how we want to orient it when we're ready to crimp. When you're all set up, squeeze and squeeze hard. If you require two hands to get the leverage because you're filming a video like this and it's awkward, that's okay as long as you can squeeze hard enough to actually get the crimp job done. When you're done, you should not be able to remove the terminal off the end of your wire. You can even take your pair of pliers and try and pull it. And if you can't remove it, then you know you've done the job correctly. Okay, now let's take a look at how to crimp with this stripper crimper combo. This time we see that we have different color, the same color coding, so red, blue, and yellow, and we have two slots. We see that the slots are actually flat and not curved, so it doesn't really matter the orientation of the terminal when you're about to crimp. Put the terminal inside of the appropriate slot and squeeze. Review the quality of your terminal job, and if all looks good, then you're done. Now let's take a look at this crimper here. We see that there are only two slots, one for non-insulated and one for insulated terminals. Since our butt splice is insulated, we'll be using this slot here. Now let's take a look at butt splices. Butt splices join two wires together. When you strip the wires, you want it such that the center of the wire is approximately in the center of the butt splice. Feed one end of the wire into the butt splice, and then crimp it. you shouldn't be able to remove the wire from the butt splice. At this point, you may wish to slide a piece of heat shrink over the end of the butt splice so that you can get some extra strain relief in your splice here. Otherwise, feed the other end of the wire into the splice. And then crimp that end.
Now the two wires should not come apart. If you have any unused region of your butt splice, you can crimp that region now. And now you're done. Now let's take a look at this uninsulated butt splice here. We see a little dimple in the center and that denotes the halfway point of the splice. So everything to the left of here is for one wire and everything to the right of the dimple is for the other. And again, we have a little slot or a little slit I should say in the top of the splice and that's important for orientation within the tool. Just like before, we want the slit of the terminal or the butt splice to be in the valley of the tool and we want the ridge of the tool to be the, on the back of the splice. After you fed the wire into the butt splice, give it a squeeze. This one may be a little bit more difficult than your insulated variety. As you can see, we've left quite an impression on the back of this splice using that really aggressive ridge. At this point, you would want to put the shrink wrap on the splice to protect it. Feed the other wire into the end of the butt splice. Set the splice inside of your tool and give it a crimp. Your two wires are now joined together with an uninsulated butt splice. Bring a heat source to your shrink wrap And then you're done. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.